Good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening at Fabulous 54 Below. At this time, we would like you to please silence all of your electronic devices, and please take note that flash photography is strictly prohibited. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 181st annual Broadway's Next Hit Musical Phony Awards. And here's your host for the evening, Greg Triggs. Oh, thank you, New York, for that sincere and unmanipulated ovation. How excited are we to be here? You know, the be exactly. The beacon begged us to play there. We said no. They sent a fruit plate. We said still no. The duplex sent us a drag queen offering lap dances. We said no, ma'am. We are holding out for the crown jewel of New York Cabaret, 54 Below! Oh. And the amazing sense of history with which this room is endowed. I mean, you just, you can feel the spirit of Liza Minnelli doing coke off of a gigolo's abs. And that was just last week, everybody. So we don't know what is going to happen, but I do know that we have some of New York's finest improvisers with us this evening. So won't you please welcome tonight's presenters of Broadway's Next Hit Musical! <laughs> Deborah Rabai! Pat Swearingen! Heidi Glykoff! And Rob Schiffman! Oh. Oh. How excited are we to be back in New York City, everyone? You know, we've been on the road since COVID. People haven't wanted to mask, so I mentioned that we're from New York City, and they pull the damn masks up. They do. So that's exciting. And um, also, you know, come back to New York, right? We've been here for a while now, and New York has gotten a little mean. I mean, I always knew it was mean, but now it has gotten very mean. Like, I ran into a friend uh, on Broadway. He said, where have you been? I said, well, we just did a show in Iowa. And he said, oh, Iowa, that stands for idiots out walking around. Mean, mean. And I said, I'm not going to put up with that. I know those people. I have seen those people. They don't walk anywhere. <laughs> I've got your back, Iowa. And then, you know, I just thought, well, I'm back in the city. I'm going to start auditioning for things. So, of course, the first thing I did was go to the dance call for the revival of dancing, Fosse's <laughs> dancing. And uh, after I got through the first round of auditions, and the paramedics were taking the oxygen away, one of the little chorus twinks came up to me and he said, Mr. Cellophane, are you okay? Mr. Cellophane, are you okay? And I said, why are you calling me Mr. Cellophane? He said, well, you remind me of the musical Chicago. And I said, why? And he said, you're old and tired and you got no business on Broadway. <laughs> mean person, mean person. And now, now that we are the kids, we are the Blessed children, we are the zeitgeist of Off-Broadway Cabaret. People are coming out of the woodwork. They are kissing our butts to do this show. I got a call just the other day, and this woman said to me, Greg, I'd like to do your show. And I said, well, we're fully cast. We are a family. We've survived years together. And she said, I don't care. I want to be on that show. Get rid of them, one of them. Do whatever it takes. <laughs> I will cut them. What do I have to do? And I finally said, how many Broadway dreams are you going to destroy, Leah Michelle? <laughs> and then, then, well, you know, the cast loves her. So, of course, Jane Lynch called me, and she thanked me for not giving in to Leah Michelle's demands. And then she asked me out on a date. And I was like, whoa, whoa, not only am I married, aren't you a lesbian? And she said, yes, aren't you Paula Poundstone? And the whole thing was very disconcerting. But uh, one thing is not going to be disconcerting this evening, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the music. Please welcome our musical director for the evening, Mr. Rick Hip Flores.
Rick, thank you for underscoring my uh, monologue. I appreciate that. Sometimes I'll just call Rick and put him on speakerphone, and he'll just underscore whatever I'm saying. It's lovely. So, Rick, how are you feeling tonight? I'm so good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm 54 below. It's my favorite spot. Awesome. 54 below, yes. It's an ageist title, by the way. Uh, we have a 55-year-old pianist who is not allowed to do the show when we appear here. It's just mean-spirited. Anyway, folks, I have a question for you. You're a New York crowd. I suspect most of you have. But how many of you have heard of the Tony Awards? <laughs> I love the kids that raise their hand. We want noise and applause, children. Have you heard of the Tony Awards? Yay! Yay! Well, tonight it's even better. You are at the Phony Awards. It's very exciting. You are about to see three of the best songs of the season, the future classics of tomorrow, the critics' darlings, and they are all going to be vying for your approval and the Phony Award and the ultimate honor, which is a full production in the second part of our show. But the entire thing is going to be based on ideas we got from you through improvisation, gems such as First thought, best thought. Life philosophies are going to be thrown about this evening. And we are going to make up things, again, based on your ideas. So when you think about it, if the show is not funny, it's your fault. So do not let that happen, because we have four of New York City's finest improvisers with us this evening. Yep. And three of them are very talented. <laughs> Together, we are a virtual who's that of the entertainment industry. We have clawed our way straight to the middle, and by God, there we intend to stay. So are you ready for some fun? <laughs> Awesome. We are going to bring out our first duet, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are going to start with a duet. It's anything could happen time. You know, w w and it's interesting. They're a very interesting team. Her favorite Disney princess is the one that fights for her father. She fights the Huns. And he is kind of nouveau riche. And uh, so together, they are Moulin Bouge. Put your hands together for Pat Swearingen and Heidi Glykoff. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 It's uh, a thrill to kick off the 181st annual Phony Awards with my friend Heidi, who just got back from a six-month contract. Yes. Uh, so it's so nice to see you. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I'm so happy to be back in New York, back on stage. But, you know, those six months away, all I could do was dream of my dear friend, Pat Swearingen. Oh, yes. very nice. You can applaud. <laughs> yeah, he deserves it. It was a very sweet showbiz lie. Um, you know what? We are thrilled to be uh, presenting you with the long-forgotten jewel in the crown of American musical theater. Um, mm -hmm. That song, of course, is... A pardoned offender in the early summer dew. <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue, really. A pardoned offender, offender in, in the, the early, early summer dew. Get another one. <laughs> <laughs> Comes to us from the musical, get another one. <laughs> Get another one is a story about <laughs> finding connection when all the world seems to be going wrong. Yes. It tells a story of a boy scout and a girl scout who concoct a plan to make money off of selling, selling. illicit Girl Scout cookies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is true, and we play the retrospective girl and boy scout. Mm -hmm. um, and in this musical, um, in this scene in particular, 
We are in the woods. Our campgrounds are right next to each other. Right next we, to each other. Yes, right next to each other. And we found this little section in the middle yes. where we concoct this, this wonderful, wonderful plan. The scene in which we see a pardon defender in the early summer dew. <laughs> we see uh, the two uh, soon to be in three or four years lovers uh, <laughs> deciding to make their pact of selling black market Girl Scout cookies. And maybe they'll be caught, maybe they won't. We'll soon find out uh, in this musical. Yes, indeed. So without further ado, a pardoned offender in the early, early summer, summer too from the musical, get another one. <laughs> It's a menthol cigarette, Susie. I stole it from one of the counselors. You want to smoke it with me? Oh, Jimmy, you're bad. Yeah, I am bad, Susie, and you're bad, too. That's why we're together here, where the two camps, the Boy Scout camp and the Girl Scout camp, meet right in the middle. Yeah. I'm going to light it. All right. Oh, wait, I have a lighter. You have a lighter? Of course. Oh, my God, it's so hot. Because, I shouldn't be saying that. Because of the lighter. Hey, sure. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What? Hey, who, ha. You guys got any Thin Mints? Yeah, we got Thin Mints. <laughs> we got Thin Mints. They can't know. I'm out here. I just need some Thin Mints and I need them fast. I need them now. Throw in some Samoas. Okay. 25 bucks, sir. $25 for That's Thin right. Mints? Plus, plus a, a hazard pay. So it's going to be 35 Fine. Here you go. <laughs> a $35 bill. <laughs> No change! Thanks for your business. Wow. This is great. Yeah. This is great. I mean, I could just come out here, I could sneak out here, you guys can give me these cookies, and I can walk away and no one knows. You're not gonna rat us out, are you? No, no, why would I do that, see? I got a blade. <laughs> ah, jeez Louise! And I, I got, got it from one of the other counselors. Boy, the scouts really are not what they used to be. Fine, fine, fine. I'm out of here. Get out of here. I won't say a word. You better not say a word. You better I can't. not. You better not get caught. What if we get caught? What if we get caught? Well, I got this lighter that'll... I don't know, I can set the forest aflame or something. Uh, oh. Did you hear that? It was over here. Well, I, I, into the woods. I thought I heard something over there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Well, if we get caught, then I might need to give up my sash, and you might need to give up your the Boy Scout thing the Boy Scouts wear. Most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, we'd be split up from each other. Well. And maybe never know each other again, except when we face our accuser in the early summer dew. Uh, well. I'm, oh, kind of worried that I be pulled from you. And I'm oh. also so worried. Huh. Because I won't know what to do. Oh, I don't want to be pulled away from those big blue eyes of yours. And I don't want to see another day if I can't hold on to your voice. something yeah. I don't know and then we'll go we'll take I heard something about Swiss banks on a movie once great we'll find one of those uh, I have a ton of bags of Swiss miss at home we can bring those and maybe you strike out some kind of deal god I can't wait to go through puberty and be with you <laughs> I know there's got to be something in this dangerous girl that's right here in front of me and I know there's something I see when I feel him. Oh, God, I wish that I was a teen. <laughs> but why parting a finger in the early summer do? A parting a
What? You seem nervous, anxious, weird. I just, I thought about the fact that if they find us, we will be sent to kid prison surely. Don't you worry about it. Oh my God, you make me so dizzy. I feel so darn whirly apart. Give them a merit badge, everyone. That was a pardoned offender in the early summer dew from the show, Get Another One. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, I get a little emotional about that because that's how my parents met. And it um, brings back a lot of memories. And, uh, oh, my goodness, Pat's character for being prepubescent was so edgy when he threatened to cut Rob. I was like, oh, I'm worried for Rob. Oh, they're acting. Oh, OK. Pat, your performance was so effective. I believed you were attracted to that woman. Um, <laughs> and then Heidi with a lighter. My goodness, she's never had a lighter in her hand. She's, I can't believe that. It just, it's, it's like finding out that Shirley Temple smoked. It just doesn't work. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was our first nominee for tonight's Phony Award. I am thrilled that our next performer can be with us. She is a Tony Award winner. Yeah, it, woo, yes, very exciting. Uh, she works at Chipotle part-time and was named Employee of the Quarter by her manager, Tony. Very exciting. Put your hands together for Deborah Rabai. staying, everyone. Um, what a great honor it is for you to be here tonight <laughs> at 54 Below to listen to this second nominated song, a song which each and every time I sing it feels like the very first time. <laughs> and of course, that song is Your Sexy Scapula. Your sexy scapula comes to us from the musical Chiropract Her. <laughs> the musical Chiropract Her, if you couldn't tell, is a steamy love story between, uh, uh, it's, it's about hidden love and if the love will be able and allowed to grow into fruition in the, in the light. Uh, Chiropract Her tells the story of two, uh, two competing chiropractors uh, with very different practices. And um, uh, they, they compete for, for clients. You know, they try to steal each other's clients. And eventually they go to a, you know, they go to a chiropractor convention. I don't know if you know if they have those. Um, at least they do in this musical. And uh, at that convention, suddenly this fiery, like, competition, there's a spark. And suddenly it's like, ah, it's love. And, but they can't let anyone know because they both have thriving practices because of their competition. So it's whether they will allow the uh, competition to go by the wayside and give in to love or let love go by the wayside and give in to their competition. And in this song, 
Your Sexy Scapula. This is the song that I sing. I am, the, uh, I am one of the uh, chiropractors. And this is, takes place uh, mid-musical at the convention. So this is a chiropractor convention. And this is the moment, the spark moment, when I, we start to fall in love. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, clearly, that's enough. But is it? I think not. Because one of the things that made this musical unbelievably uh, based on this chiropractor so memorable was the way that the actors, of course, moved their bodies. It's a chiropractor musical. Uh, the way they, they used the dance. And in the industry, we call this choreography. <laughs> You're welcome. So what I discovered tonight, Rick, believe it or not, the choreographer for the musical is here tonight at the Phony Awards. I can't believe it myself. It's hard to imagine. And there you are. I, I was blinded by the light. It's you chewing a French fry, covering your, yes, of course it's you, like it's not you. Stand up and accept your applause. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Now, don't stay standing. I'm not done with you. So, um, you know, we go way back. So many rehearsals in the rehearsal room, so many hours. You're a real taskmaster. So it's clear that I know your name. But if you don't mind telling everyone else your name, that'd be good. My name is uh, JJ. JJ, that's exactly right. It's JJ, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, JJ, I hate to put you in the spotlight. I, I, I hate to do it. <laughs> but if you don't mind, right from where you are, showing us that one signature dance move that you're known for. Yes, yes, the one that uh, I put backstage. Yes. Made, uh, famous in the uh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes, JJ. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, JJ. He makes it look so easy. You can have a seat now. Thank you, JJ. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to snap, crackle, and pop as we listen to the song, Your Sexy Scapula, from the musical Chiropract Her. My God, your posture is amazing. You're just trying to butter me up, Brett. Carla. Yeah, Brett. I was just hanging around with this uh, skeleton. I know. Uh, figuring out where the uh, anterior fibula You know where the anterior is. fibula is? Yes. It's in front, of, it's, it's, it's behind the it's posterior. Behind it's the in front of the posterior. It's in front, in front posterior, posterior is behind. behind. <laughs> How's your clavicle? I prefer not to talk about that since it was uh, removed. Yes. Af after it was fractured. Since it was fractured. I want you to know that it hasn't affected your structure at all. Thank Often you. Often when people have their clavicles removed, their necks tend to droop. I know you know that because you're a chiropractor. I am. Attention, uh, attention at yes, chiropractors convention. at the chiropractic convention. That's where we are, Brett, yeah. For the next hour, free buttery nipples. Ooh. It's a sexy shot. You know, they've really been going off the rails at these conventions recently. Have you tried the buttery nipple technique? It, it, it helps. It helps keep your, 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 your posture. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all a fluster. Calm down. <laughs> your shoulder's low. That's a sure sign of something. And your, uh, your shoulder has a hemangioma. Yes. For a while there, we thought it was a hermangiona. <laughs> then I thought it was a Chuck Mangiona. You better be careful, otherwise your spine is gonna start kind of wriggling back and I don't forth. care. I don't care if my spine wiggles all over the place. The bottom line is this. Carla, I'd, I'd take scoliosis all over my back if it meant I could curve around with you. Turn and turn and turn again. Show me the side of your back. Learn and burn and burn again. Is this a love attack? I can feel my heart bursting right past my ribs. Oh, on my heart, you've got dick. Say 
Carla, point at my scapula. Are you not sure where it oh, is? Oh, I know where it is. I do. Go know ahead. Where it Go is. ahead and point at it then. Turn around. There's two of them. That's right. I knew that. Scapulae, scapularum, Italian for sing. The way your bones are placed under your skin. They take me by surprise. Oh, I want to sin. Oh, what's beneath your muscular tissue can't be seen. Wow, is it hot in here or was it that number? That was Deborah Rabai with your sexy scapula from the show Chiropract Her. And you know, one of the things I love about our show, I've been doing it for a while now, but one of the things I love is it's not just entertaining, it's not just musically gifted, it's educational. And, you know, that the scapula, of course, connects the clavicle to the humerus, which, of course, we all knew because it's an important part of the shoulder girdle. I think we all knew that. But then to go even deeper with humangiona, I saw a couple of people brush away a tear because they suffer from that. And then the uh, just the angst that couple went through. It must be so hard to be straight. I just, I, I really feel bad for them. And JJ, where's JJ? J. Oh my goodness. We call that move the used car inflatable. It's, it's, it, it was wonderful. So again, I, I am humbled by the company I keep. And folks, I don't know how you're going to do it. It is almost time to vote. We only have one more nominee. Again, I am thrilled that our final presenter of the evening can be with us this evening. He's very in demand. He was recently referred to in the New York Times in a review he was referred to as also being on stage. <laughs> Put your hands together for Rob Schiffman. <laughs> <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, every now and then, a song comes along that changes the world. <laughs> changes the way we see ourselves and the way we choose to interact with those around us. It's extremely unlikely that this is one of those songs. But then in a long line of musical theater classics, such as Summertime and Singing in the Rain, comes this new classic, I know you know the song I'm speaking of, of course, is Crab Cake Lady. <laughs> Crab Cake Lady. Which comes to us from the musical Dungeness of Love. And Dungeness of Love uh, is a, it's a horror musical. <laughs> and um, it's about 
a, a, a man who is obsessed. It's about obsession. Uh, uh, it takes place in um, Boston, in New England, the New England area in the early 1800s, a time with which I'm sure we're all equally familiar. Um, the early 1800s in the New England area in, the sea, in a seaport town. Uh, and uh, it tells the story of a man who's completely obsessed with a woman who sells crab cakes. <laughs> to the point uh, that he is consistently professing his love for her and uh, she rebuffs him. And so he does the only thing he can possibly think to do, of course, and that is he kidnaps her and keeps her in a tower. <laughs> and uh, it's the story of, of her ultimate uh, rescue and, and what happens during that time. Now, I play uh, this man. And uh, the scene in which I sing the song Crab Cake Lady, um, I, am, I am singing to my uh, father trying to explain to him the feelings that I have, although he, he's aware of the problem. He's trying to convince me to relax, calm down, stop being so obsessive, and I'm explaining how much I, I just, I'm obsessed with the crab cake uh, woman. Now, <clears throat> it is based on a true story. Um, the thing about the musical uh, Dungeness of Love that really grabbed the critics' attention, other than the obvious social relevance, is, um, <laughs> The lyrics, the lyrics of this musical were groundbreaking. This was the first musical to ever use adverbs. <laughs> so now, you know, we weren't just stalking, but we were stalking profusely, <laughs> which really raised the stakes. There was one lyric in particular that every time I sang it, it just felt like truth. It felt like Sondheim meets Shakespeare. You know the lyric I'm talking about because I'm sure you wrote it down. You probably tweeted it. You, 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 you tattooed it on yourself. You wrote it on your Facebook page, your yearbook page. And that lyric, of course, that fits so well in the story of obsession, that lyric, of course, is... <sighs> the retina is the window to the soul. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, won't you come with me down the dark paths of New England obsession in the early 18th, 1800s? 18th century, 1800s, that's not the same thing. 1800s. As I present to you the song Crab Cake Lady from the musical Dungeness of Love featuring the lyric, the retina is the window to the soul. became president and his <laughs> and his policies don't you hate his policies son yes father i do i can't stand millard fillmore tell me tell me more specifics about millard fillmore's policies son millard fillmore he, he signed a proclamation, and the proclamation said that all sea creatures, all animals, if they're sold from the sea, should be taxed. It's not right. It's not right at all, especially to those who are attempting to sell them, like my darling Vanessa. Oh. <laughs> that was a lot of exposition, son! <laughs> Father. Father, she... She looked at me today when I walked past. She, she put an eye on me. I... She's a stranger. She's a gypsy. <laughs> Father, I love her. Excuse me. <laughs> I Real. love her. And, and she'll love me too, Father. She will. She will. I'm going there tonight at 6 o'clock when, the, when, the, when the, they close up shop. Did you put a mural of her in the inside of my lighthouse? Yes, I did. I, I painted the whole thing. I, 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 I killed a sheep, and I used its blood. I know I could have just used paint, but it seemed more dramatic. Listen to... Listen to yourself. A sheep murdered? So you can have a crush on a woman? It's more than it's a no. crush. It's more than a crush, Father. It's love. Love? It's love. Oh, my boy. It's the most beautiful love I've ever felt from the moment I laid eyes on Vanessa. Mm. The way she takes the crabs and 
shreds them and adds butter and mushes them into a patty and- I know how to eat a crab! It reminds me of my love for your mother and look what happened to me! Don't mention her! I'm a- I'm a bent old man using a mic stand as a cane! What's a microphone? I don't know! Well, I do know. It's a way to get your thoughts heard. It's a way to let your voice ring out. Like I wish I could for my sweet, sweet Vanessa. It's not a clam, it's not a carp, it's not a bass. It's more than that, it's in my heart, which will not pass. I hold her close each time I wake, and when I sleep inside my mind, she rides in deep and deep, so deep. And I will have her someday as my very own. And I'll sit there at a table, a table unknown. I'll use a fork, some lemon juice I might spray someday, someday with my crab cake lady. Oh, with my crab cake wife. She is my crab cake lady, and soon we'll share. Running Take round. Care of your heart. Two little children may be born, may be found. Right and we will keep them outside. We all will run. It'll be a crab cake and a life placed perfectly on a bun. Me and my crab cake lady. Oh, my crab cake. Why? Life can be so crazy, life can be so wild, life you know it all can swallow you whole. But when I look right at her and stare into her eyes, I think the retina is the window, the window to the soul. My crab cake lady, my crab shall share with her a plate, be it never not too late. I swear I'll take her on a date. Be if she careful. says no, she's an ingrate, and in my heart I cannot wait for my crab cake. Love. about a man who is obsessed with a woman who makes crab cakes and is going to kidnap her. So of course he talks and processes the strategy around that with his father. <laughs> it was like a trip to the Kennedy compound, y'all. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And then, <laughs> then just the subtle nuances of Millard Fillmore, which of course, meant that we were between 1850 and 1853, the years of his administration, as the leader of the Know Nothing Party. It just enriched it so much. 
I, now I know exactly where we were in the 1800s, right? Right? I saw you nodding, right? And then also, also to know the crab cake lady's recipe, which is to take crab and butter and smush them together. It changed everything for me. I've been using bread crumbs. I've been chopping up like peppers and onions. I've wasted a lot of crab, y'all, so thank you. I think we all agree, theater makes life bigger. And now, folks, it is time to vote. And I do not envy you the task at hand because you have to decide between these three classics. So let me explain to you how we're going to vote. If you, if you look just, uh, there's a little ledge in your tables and we've got little voting indicators for you. No one fell for that. You're, that always works on the road. We were in Kentucky last week and they're still looking for those things. Uh, <laughs> No, we are not voting by elect <laughs> We are not voting by electronics. We are needy damaged actors. So you will be voting by applause. You know, let's say you enjoyed a show. It wasn't necessarily your favorite, but you want to be supportive. You're going to vote gently as though you were wearing white gloves at a golf tournament, very lightly, like this. Yeah. Even that is more than some of these musicals deserve. Now, on the other hand, if you passionately love one and you think it deserves a full production in the next part of our show, you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure your favorite wins by going 54 below crazy like this. <laughs> okay, okay, this is not a standing ovation. It helps. But standing up could make the difference. <laughs> anyway, after we find out how the majority of you feel, I'm going to run backstage really quickly, call the Electoral College, find out who actually won. <laughs> and then that's going to be the winner of the phony award. Now, obviously, we have taken you to so many disparate and far-flung worlds. We are going to recreate those quickly for you. So won't you please welcome the presenters back to the stage. <laughs> Remember our first show, everyone? Oh, it was a gentle time where a Boy Scout and a Girl Scout were meeting between their camps to talk about illicit cookies. The song was a pardoned offender in the early summer dew from the show that this lady suggested. Get another one. If this was your favorite, vote now. <laughs> then we saw a lot of people with poor posture and we responded. <laughs> with the first chiropractic musical ever. The song was your sexy scapula. The show was chiropract her. If this is your favorite, clap now. <laughs> by the way, by the way, those of you that were able to stand, thank a chiropractor. <laughs> and then our final musical, of course, you thought, we've been in modern time. When are we going to time travel to 1850 to 1853? And we took you there. We took you there with an appetizer. The song was Crab Cake Lady. The show was Dungeness of Love. If this is your favorite, let us know now.
Wow, it's, it's like Georgia up in here. <laughs> we have a winner, and it is Crab Cake Lady! Oh, I don't even know where to begin. I, I am so honored. You know, it, it, there have been so many musicals based in the 1800s in New England about crustaceans. Because I'm pretty sure crab is a crustacean. It is? Sometimes you just luck into smart. But the fact that finally one tonight was recognized, it just shows the, it, it shows the, the, the wisdom of, 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 of the general public. That's you. Um, and while I, 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 I want to dedicate this award oh. to my father, um, my dad uh, died uh, 10 years before I was born, and I, I never got to... <laughs> never got to meet him. Very sad, but... Sad story. Dad was a big lover of crab, for sure, and he'd be so proud tonight. Now, I stand up here proud myself, but of course, I can't take all the credit because while I was fortunate enough to sing that incredible song, I wasn't the writer of that incredible title. Where are you, writer? Are you out there of Crab Cake Lady? Right there? Come on up here. Get up here. Come on up. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, our writer, keep it going. Come on. Come on. Oh, yes. Come join us. Oh, yes. Bring it in. We did it! We did it! Oh, uh, you, you. All right, tell them your name. Brendan. Brendan. Brendan, where did you come up with that title, Crab Cake Lady? Um, uh, I like crab cakes. And ladies, very nice. Do me a favor, Brendan, stand over here. I've had all the time in the world to be able to thank my people. You go ahead, the show's yours. Uh, we're out of oh, time. Oh, what a shame. Sorry, yeah. oh, thank you so much, Brendan. You can go sit down. Thank you so much. Thank you. How exciting, folks. Now, before we begin the next part of the show, I, I need to brag for a second. Um, I've been a professional entertainer for almost 30 years, and I know how to read an audience. And right now, from you guys, I'm getting a lot of rage and disgust. <laughs> You're thinking you put your heart and soul into this glass bowl from Target? And we only used five or six of those titles. What's up with that? Well, we're going to use, a, yes, we're going to use another one. Yay. And for this one, uh, we are going to bring up a phony award legend, ladies and gentlemen, singing her signature song, which is, of course, my white wine is spoiled, but my milk is not. <laughs> my white wine is spoiled, but my milk is not, which tells the story of a young milkmaid in Wisconsin uh, during the Depression who is overcoming alcoholism. It's a musical comedy, uh, and so... Here singing, my white wine is spoiled, but my milk is not, is phony award legend. Please welcome Missa Thompson. Thank you, everyone. This is for JT. Summer 23 I went to a party The times were hot The band was loud
Folks, I, Missa, what, what's your inspiration when you're singing songs like that? Honestly, it's really near and dear to all of us, uh, the injustices that have been wrought upon society by the dairy industry. Yeah. <laughs> and wine, wine doesn't need to be racial. Why does it gotta be white wine, right? <laughs> I think we all know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Shabley! <laughs> now, folks, not that I can top that, but let's talk about a couple of the songs that were nearly nominated, shall we? Uh, including um, Let's Kaboom It. <laughs> Who, where, Victoria, where are you? Okay, clearly Victoria wants to go home with one of the many men in her booth so they can kaboom it. And then we've got, we've got the alligator hop. Is that from your table as well? Are you from Florida? Uh, what was your inspiration for alligator hop? You don't know. Two drinks doesn't mean only two drinks. So. And then we've got, of course, Oblivious on Jupiter in honor of today's moonshot because we needed to go to the moon again. That's the biggest issue we're facing as, as a country by, by all means. So um, anyway, are you having a good time? In the room, there is a tangible energy. When am I going to get the chance to see this show again? I see it in your eyes. I want you to know we are going to be back here at 54 Below on January, Sunday, January 15th for the last show of my 50s. I can only assume that gasp was a gasp of what? He's in his 50s, but yes. Uh, this, uh, we are going to be back on January 15th. We hope you will join us. Uh, and before we begin with our full production of The Dungeness of Love, I want to remind you that every significant American musical of the last 150 years has started with an overture, and so does this one. So with the overture of The Dungeness of Love featuring Crab Cake Lady, please welcome Mr. Rick Hip. Flores!
Marketplace, look at my market face. Anything, anything's for sale. Here in the human heart, here in the human heart, you see the thing you want and bought it bad. Here in the human heart, all that that will do is make you feel depressed and sad. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone. job here. Everyone has a face. Here in the marketplace, here in the marketplace, everything's for sale. Here in the marketplace, here in the marketplace, everything's for sale. She died making these cakes, and we have to sell them to the people. Oh, my God, Mom, you're being wicked dramatic, okay? <laughs> Hello, Vanessa. Oh, uh, crab cake for sale? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like one from Vanessa, please. Huh? Oh, Vanessa's busy. Give it to me. Thank you. Vanessa? Hello. Hey, Ma, how the hell this guy know my name? <laughs> Vanessa, I, 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 later tonight I'm going to watch the ship's launch. Would you like to join me? Vanessa's busy. <laughs> Vanessa has crab cakes to make. She has to crack the shell, shred uh, the meat, and throw in the butter and mush it. I, I, did, a, I did a drawing of you, Vanessa. Do you like it? I, I, I made it out of elk's Elk's blood. I could have used paint, but why would I? Ah. I'll see you later, Vanessa. Okay. Here's the drawing. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh. 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 Oh, that guy gives me the heebie-jeebies. My dear sweet Vanessa, a young girl like you isn't safe in the market, not safe with the likes of them. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I'll say it too. There's that... no one like you, Vanessa. Uh, well, no one can make crab cakes as good as I can, but that's because you taught me, Ma. Well, that's because my God rest her soul. <laughs> everything that I am, everything that I ever will be is because you're my Ma. And everything I am is because of my Ma. And everything, you get the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's about family, <laughs> tradition. Yeah. We come from here and we pass it down and we stand on the shoulders of those who came before. Yeah, huh? indeed. I remember you telling me about how in 801 our family came here. That's right. That was 40 something years ago. 51 years ago. <laughs> Math is never my good strength, but crabs are. <laughs> You Under think? the sea, you know the crabs like to live. <laughs> they have a good time, and to us, their lives they give. And so we make all the cakes so delicious. Yum, yum! <laughs> Who can resist eating them? Never just one. Because we're the crabby ladies. Ha cha cha cha! Yes, we're the crabby ladies. Serving it hot. <laughs> yes, we're the crabby ladies. Ha cha 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 cha. <laughs> and we're the crabby ladies. We'll sell you just what we got. <laughs> now in the family, you got to stay. Don't you get pulled away? Not today. Here in the family, I'll stay with my mom. Cause here. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha! We are the crabby ladies! 
<laughs> Don't you hate President Fillmore's I much? I hate me? him. Now, he made a proclamation declaring it illegal. He taxed, he taxed those who sell the, the seafood in the marketplaces. It's wrong, wrong, I say. Good. So we both hate Millard Fillmore. I hate Millard Fillmore with all my heart for what he's done to my dear sweet Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa Schmanessa. She's an immigrant. And isn't it weird that a country full of Im uh, based on immigrants hates immigrants? Oh, I bet that kind of attitude will pass. I think it's even weirder that her last name rhymes with her first name. Oh! Vanessa! Quit talking about that Vanessa! Oh, what, what are you doing, Father? Why are you using that? I'm using a mic stand as a cane! What's a microphone? I don't know! Well, I do know, Father. It's a thing that allows you to speak what's on your mind and in your heart. And I'll tell you what's on my mind and in my heart. Those girls are gypsies. They speak with Boston accents, but they're gypsies. She looked at me today, Father. Oh. I touched her finger. It, it, it felt like silk. Like, I, I, it was incredible. I, I, I wrote her name. On Is this, this mural? Yes. On my lighthouse? Yes, I did it all with sheep's blood. I could have used paint, but why? You, <laughs> you sacrificed the sheep. Listen to yourself. The, sea, the sheep was proud, as any sheep would be, as any animal would be, if to dedicate its life to the love that I feel. Just a little bit, just a little bit of crab. Put it there on the slab on some bread. Just be careful. Maybe just a little butter and a little bit of love there too. Just a little bit of me and you and love that's winding in my head. I feel so much for her, my dear, dear heart. My sweet, sweet love that If I could butter her up just like the crab and put her in the bread that is my world, she'd be my crab king lady. My crab king wife. My crab king lady. And she'd live within my crab. Life can be so strange, you know. Life can be so wild. Life, you know, it fills an empty hole. But when I look at Vanessa, there deep in her eyes, I think the retina's a window, the window to her soul. And I must have my crab cake lady and I'll bring Just her to my heart careful. I'll cut the Just crab apart careful. I'll be careful so I'll be smart careful. for love it is an art I suppose I'll use a poisonous dart to bring her into my crab cake Tonight, at midnight, I shall bring her here. Leave the back door unlocked. Or the front door. Just let me know which one. There are easier ways to meet women. <laughs> You're right. But not Vanessa. This is the only way. So, my nameless son. <laughs> What a long day of hauling crab. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, hello, I'd like to buy the crab. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, mister, we just sold out. Oh, what a shame. Here I am from Germany to buy the crab. <laughs> Is there any way I could get one? Uh, well, let me see what I can do. Oh, maybe over there. Ha-ha! <laughs> Come with me, I'll <laughs> take you now. <laughs> a crab pig <laughs> lady, a <laughs> pig <laughs> lady. Vanessa! Vanessa! Are you in there? She's... <gasps> Vanessa, the crabs, they're gone. But her hat is here. Vanessa, uh... Oh, oh. Hello. Hello, I, I They don't... call me Ezekiel Lighthouse. Well, because let's... I run the lighthouse. Well, Mr. House, I haven't got time. My daughter was in this hat and now she's gone. My son took her. What? He's obsessed with your daughter. Oh my gosh, is he that ugly, incredibly ugly man that was here earlier? Come with me. Come. Ah, ah, there he is, making ah, his way, if you can hear him, ah, through the where table. Are you? Up there, I, go, go. Uh, uh, yes, please. All you need to know is this I'll make sure he doesn't hurt her. That's not enough. She's my daughter. I need her. Hey, I've got to go get her. I need it. I need a crab cake. Make uh, me a Stay crab. with me. This isn't the right kind of butter. I, I, I'll order in from Uber Eats in 200 years. All right. I'm trying my best. Stay with me forever. Oh. Stay with me. The crabs are light and sweet. Stay with me. Oh. Don't you Get understand? Off. Get off. He will continue to obsess about her unless we let him get it out of his system. Or you could take me to where he has taken her because I don't know where that is. I'll never let you out of my system as long as I live. It's, no. it's there on the horizon. It's the lighthouse. The Ooh. lighthouse. Oh, the lighthouse. Won't you take me there, please, sure. Mr. House? Uh, more crabs. Uh, more crabs. No. More crabs. Uh, more crabs. More crabs. Lies. This is not the way to meet a woman. Keep going. This I'll way? I'll catch up later. Am I going the right way? Yes. Now, I... ooh, no. knock. Kiss me. Oh, Vanessa. No. Kiss me, Vanessa. No. Become mine. Once you kiss me, you'll never leave. No. Stop. Ma! Vanessa. Dad! Vanessa. Oh, my back! Mr. House! If, if only there was a medical practice that would help an old man with his back! You have the scapula of a crab! I've got two of them! I'll never let her go! She's mine now! Ma, you gotta help me. This guy's so weird, and he stinks. <laughs> you may think that she's yours. She's mine, she's mine. Because your heart is so empty. Empty without the crab. <laughs> without the crab. Aren't you gonna help me out here? I'm an old man, and I'm tired. Well, I'm tired, too. Listen, you, uh, your name. My name? Yeah. I was, I was, we were too poor. I was never given one. <laughs> Let me give you one. Ezekiel Jr. That's a good name. Do you feel that touch? It feels like That's the touch of, of a, a mother. mother. I never had a mother. It's funny because I had a son. <laughs> Loretta? Loretta, is that you? I know one way to test to make sure. How do you prepare crab? You shred the crab, and you take butter, and you smush it. Well, call me Chuck Manzioni. You're Loretta. Son! Son! Mother! You can't be with her! No, you can't! That's your stepsister! <laughs> but you do have a mother now. Come to my breast, but don't suckle. <laughs> Loretta, Mother. what happened with you in that storm? I thought you died at sea, Loretta. Loretta, you're Loretta. I know. Well, I thought you died at sea. No, it turns out that the crabs all got together and made a raft, oh. and they brought me into shore, and they gave their lives for my life, and I have repaid them by killing them and making them into cakes. And now you, now 
Well, you'll take her away, won't you? No. You'll leave again, won't you? No, we're going to be a family. In fact, I always carry a spare crab cake as an offering. Taste it and taste what family love tastes like, or at least butter. Let me taste it. Tastes like a thin mint. <laughs> I don't know what that is! I guess this means you're my brother. And maybe someday in the future we could join organized groups that are incredibly gendered. Uh, I've always wanted a family. A little fun family jab. I've always wanted a brother. Another person in my life who smells like crap. <laughs> It gets kind of convoluted, <laughs> but it makes sense in the end. Where you begin, where's the middle, doesn't matter as long as it ends. Crack your heart open with love, like a shell. Like a shell. This all will work out, it'll work out so well, unless any of us has a shellfish allergy. <laughs> Deborah.